Shalom, Yasha'Allah, Shalom. This is your brother Abaya Yasha'Allah. First and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of Yasha'Allah. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akium and the Akwathium that's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. Like I said, this is your brother Abaya Yasha'ala coming at you again with these precepts, man. These precepts. The topic of the day is how to pray. Right? How to pray. Because we're speaking to our power, the King of Kings. And you can't come to the King of Kings no any kind of way, man. Put yourself in the mindset of if you went to go visit royalty today, you would have to dress yourself a certain way. You would have to walk into that chamber a certain way, and you would have to approach that king a certain way. It's the same thing. In fact, on a grander scale, because we're speaking about the most high power, Yahweh. Right? So we have to come to him how he says to come to him, not how we feel like. Right? So the only way to find out how to come to him is to get into these precepts. So let's go. All right. Especially in these times, man, that we in, you need to know how to pray to your power. All right. Start at um, the book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 9. It says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So the first thing you need to be doing is in the law. Be in the law, statutes and commandments, by faith. Right? If you're not doing that, you're praying in vain. Right? You're praying yourself into a trick bag. Because the Most High blesses who he wants. He blesses good and evil. Right? But we want our blessings to be sure, right? We want our blessings to mean something, man, right? So first step, make sure you're following his commandments, right? Let's see. And like I said, I can't reiterate enough, man, especially in these times and the times that we are about to face, you need to know how to contact your power right so this is the book of Sirach, um, chapter 18 and verse 23 it says before thou prayest prepare thyself and be not as one that tempteth the Lord right so before you start saying anything Get in your mind what you want to come to him about. Have in your spirit what the things that you want your father to bless you with. All right? Because first and foremost, you're going to be coming to the father for righteous things, man. We're not praying for no million dollars and a house on the hill with 20 cars. We're not, we're not praying for that, man. We're praying for knowledge. All right? We're praying for wisdom and understanding. Right, anything to edify the kingdom. Right, we're praying for love, uh, wisdom. Right, we're praying for all the things that we need to better ourselves and to better our people. Right. Uh, let's see. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, and verse three. It says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Right. So that's the order. The most high, the Messiah, man, woman and child. Right. Child is implied. It says every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So if you're a male. Right. And you're praying. You have to cover your head. I mean, you have to have your head uncovered because if you have your head covered, you're dishonoring the Messiah. And in essence, you're dishonoring the King of Kings. 
right? It says, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Meaning it's a shame for her. All right? Because scripture said the glory of a woman is her hair. So you're literally taking the glory away from yourself when you uncover your head and pray to your father. This is for, for the women only. For the males, you have to have your head uncovered. The females, you have to have your head covered. Verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, which is shaven. It says, but... If it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Right? It just said <laughs> it's dishonoring or it's a dishonor for a woman to have her head shaven. Right? So your head is supposed to be covered. Verse 7, it says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of power, but the woman is the glory of the man, right? So we have to make sure we do everything decently and in order, right? Thus says the most high. So you have to make sure that you're following the law, statutes and commandments, prepare what to say, Males, make sure your head is uncovered. Females, make sure your head is covered. All right? Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to come a time to where, uh, man, the prayer is going to go up like a hotline. But not everybody going to get answered. Just like a hotline. You got to come at them correct in order to get your prayers answered. All right? So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 66, and verse 18. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, which is your mind, right? It says, the Lord will not hear me. So what does that mean? You have to clear your mind of any negativity, right? Rebuke them thoughts. Right, align yourself up with the Father. Make sure you're uh, you're you're trying as hard as you can to get in uh, to be in His will, to do right at all times, especially, but it's, or at, at all times, but especially when you are when you are about to pray, because that's a sacred time between you and the Father, man. That's a time where you're reaching out to the ancient power of our forefathers, the power of the world. All right. So, once again, man, these are just steps that you must take in order to pray. All right? So, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 6, and verse 10. It says, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime meaning as he did before he got caught up in his captivity All right so look to the east because where is Jerusalem it's in the east alright Pray towards our our land. Pray towards where the Most High told us to pray towards. All right? Pray often. Daniel did it three times a day. All right? But that don't necessarily mean that you have to pray three times a day. It could be five. It could be seven. It could be twelve. But pray. Matter of fact, let's get that. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 17. 
It says pray without ceasing. Meaning pray non-stop, man, as often as you can pray. Right? We have no control over the next minute, the next hour, the next second, the next day. We have no control over anything. So we have to stay in the spirit, man. Stay praying. All right? It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach concerning you. In all things give thanks, man. Right? But the point I wanted was pray without ceasing. Right? See, we never knew these things because the Christian church don't teach these things. The Christian church uh, teaches you to put your hands together and it don't matter where you're facing, what's, what's going on, what you're doing, just pray. Right? I'll... I'll all the way out of order, man. All the way out of order. All right. So this is the book of First Kings, chapter eight, and verse fifty-four. It says, and it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven, right? So when you pray, I mean, uh, the praying hands that everybody get as a tattoo, don't do that. Open your hands up to receive the blessing, man. Open your, open your hands up as a sign of surrender to the Most High. You want him to enter into your life, don't close them out, open up. You want him to answer you, open up, man. All right, palms up. Pray to the Most High in, in a submissive state, humble, meek, so that you can get blessed. Blessed are the meek, right? For they, for they will inherit the earth. Okay. So. See, book of Psalm chapter 5 verse 7 just to reiterate which where are you supposed to be facing when you pray All right. it says but as for me I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple All right. notice it said and in thy fear meaning uh, righteously, meaning according to thus says the Most High, will I worship toward thy holy temple. All right? I will look toward the hills for my help, for whence comes my help. Proper steps to pray, man. If you want to be heard, hey, check the precepts. Right? You want to be heard, check the precepts, man. Do thus says the most high, not thus says me, but thus says the most high. Especially, I cannot, I cannot iterate this more, or enough rather. Especially in these times we are about to be facing. This damn devil has some wicked plans that he's about to unleash. They already got everything in place. The buildup is already uh, at hand. All right? Any moment now, man. Any moment now, it could, it could, it could go down. So if you don't, if you don't know how to reach your father, man, in that time, man, that's a sad day for you. That's a sad and terrible day for you, man. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see here. Let me reiterate this one more time. <laughs> one more time, man. Look, O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east. Just in case a person is saying, well, you know, they used to call uh, Virginia. It was a city in Virginia that was called Jerusalem. Are you sure we talking about the east? Yes. 
Old Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from God. Pray towards the east. Palms open, heart open, submissive and humble, in righteousness and in truth and sincerity. All right. Let's see, uh, this is the book of First Kings, chapter eight and verse forty-seven. It says, yet if they shall bethink themselves, meaning you going over yourself, like you checking yourself, like you know what you do, you know what you do wrong, you know what skeletons are in your closet, man, right? Don't nobody know you better than you, with the exception of the most high, of course. By Shema Mashiach Yahweh right? It says, in the land whether they were carried captives, which is where we are, whether it be America, whether it be Mexico, whether it be South America, whether it be Canada, whether it be France, whether it be England, Africa, China, Russia, Australia, it don't matter. Whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives. Meaning you're coming back and doing everything that you're supposed to be doing according to the book of the law. You're keeping these high holy days, you're keeping the holy days, you uh, are subs uh, sustaining, uh, 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 you are um, withholding yourself from eating abominable things all right, you're um you're doing everything that you possibly can do according to the book. All right, it says, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely; we have committed wickedness. All right, so you're you're repenting, you're repenting, and you're naming out the things that you did. It says, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and maintain their cause when it says maintain their cause it means bring justice why else do you think all of these things have been happening on the earth because we're waking up to who we are we're not just praying all willy-nilly now we're going by the book and since we've been doing so things have been happening on this earth that are unexplained and the more of us that wake up and we all saying the same prayers, we all praying for the same things, the downfall of Babylon, the destruction of our enemies. And we praying for the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that comes with the laws and the faith. We're praying for faith. We're praying for all righteous things, man. Most high willing. We're all praying for righteous things. All right. So now, what do you say when you pray? All right? Of course, you have to prepare what to say, meaning what you what you want, uh, what you want the most high to bless you with before you really get into your prayer. Right? So this stuff, all of these things that you've been praying for, it's already resonating in your mind. It's already resonating in your spirit. Right? Everything is in one accord. And when you finally feel like you straight, right? Like you ready to go ahead and, and say your prayer. These are the words that you say. All right? This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 6. And... Let me see. 
Yeah, I start at five. I start at five. Well, actually, let me get straight to the point. Um, verse nine. It says, "After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth, as it is in heaven." Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our indebtors, or as we forgive our debtors. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Right? That's the old, those are the words that you speak when you pray. Right? Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to start back over. And I'm going to break it down. Right? So Matthew 6 verse 9, it says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Meaning, that's a commandment. When you pray, say this. It says, Our Father, possessive pronoun. Our. Not everybody's. Our. Right? So that means you have to be an Israelite to say this prayer. And it be heard. Right? It says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, meaning holy be thy name. That name is only given to Israel. So that name is for Israel. All right? It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's literally saying, When the kingdom comes, it will be on this earth and will be ruled the same way the Most High is ruling heaven. It says, give us this day our daily bread. This is your daily, this is a portion of your daily bread as we speak. Right? These words, this, this knowledge, the spirit that's flowing through this. Right? Because the word is spirit. Right? And it, it ain't just boxed into the word, like the words in the book, it's the connection between us and the Father, right? It's that comfort, right? That lets us know who we are, right? That that lets us know we're going to be okay. It gives us hope, right? It says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So you're asking the most high for forgiveness for the sins that you've committed, because the wages of sin is death, so you owe that. Every time you commit sin, so you're asking forgiveness for that. But the only way to get that forgiveness is if you forgive. You have to forgive. But this only applies to the children of Israel, right? Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. That applies to the children of Israel, according to Leviticus 19, um, 17 through 18. All right, it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, All right? Because the most high chastens those that he loves. So you're going to go through some things. You can bet that the moment you start um, following, thus says the most high, you can go ahead, prepare yourself for trials and tribulations because it's coming, but it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you better. It's going to make you wiser because you're going to be seeking the most high through it all. It's going to increase your faith because you know the Most High going to bring you out of it. All right? It says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's self-explanatory. All right? So once you do everything that you are supposed to do, all right? You said your, you didn't, you didn't, you make sure that you've repented, you've humbled down, you become submissive to the Most High. You gain your thoughts. You've calmed yourself, right? You're, you've cleared your mind of iniquity. Right? You got your your uh, your palms spread open, ready to receive the blessing. You're facing toward the Holy Land, which is in the east, right? You say the words that you're supposed to say, right? So after all of that. The Most High is going to bless you with an extra help in the midst of that because you're doing what he says to do. Watch this, man. This is the book of 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. All right? It says, And he that searcheth the hearts, which is the Most High, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He maketh intercession for the saints. Who are the saints? Psalm 50 and 5. Those that made a sacrifice with the Most High. Those that got the covenant through sacrifice. That's Yahshua Allah, man. That's Israel only. So you've done all the steps that you're supposed to do. And you saying what you think you really need and you really do need that because you're praying to him in righteousness. But it's something else that you should be praying for, but it hasn't crossed your mind yet. Guess what? The most I said, seeing as though you're doing what you're supposed to do, I'm going to make your spirit pray for you. I'm going to make your spirit pray for you. Pray for, pray for the things that you need in your life. That's the beauty of the most high, man. If you give yourself over to the Father, man, he going to make sure you're straight. No matter what it looks like. No matter what trial or tribulation you in. No matter what, man. He going to bring you through that thing. He going to give you everything you need to make it through. Right? So, last precept. Uh, most high willing, man. This is the book of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 9. Slot. Okay. This is the book of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 9. It says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Alright? We we'll read the next the next verse, right? It says, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish, give him a serpent. Right? Of course not. If a father, if a son asks a father for something to eat, he gonna get something to eat. If a if a and same thing, if he asks for a fish, he ain't finna give him no snake. You gonna give him some hey some of that good whitening. Right? What you want? Fried? You want, somebody, you want bait? What you need? What's available? You feel me? So. You, you followed all of the steps and you've done your due diligence to make sure that you're trying as hard as you possibly can to stay in the light, right? And not in darkness. The Most High will answer your prayers. He's been answering ours, which is why Babylon is falling down, man. And it will not come back up. It will not rise. It's a wrap. All right? So, most high willing, this video was edifying. Uh, I want to say all praise, honor, and glory to the most high Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalom, Yahshua.